So uh, my name is Michael Angelo Caruso, everybody. We are recording a session on how to, um, how to create email distribution lists. Again, they're called dist lists uh, uh, by some people in the trade, and we can use them to amp up attendance, uh, get people to click, um, we can get them to uh, show interest, we can get them to fill out polls, we can get them to do all kinds of things, just to answer the bloody email. There's all kinds of mechanisms here. But communication is really important. It's two-way communication and not one-way communication. Too often we send out this bulk email and then we report back to whoever asks us to send it. Yeah, I sent the email out. Well, that's, what's that? I mean, we need people to respond to the email. And that's where the craftiness comes in of making sure you're sending it to the right people, making sure that it's crafted properly. This call is mostly about that list itself. I have a question for you before we get started. Uh, and uh, we, I realize we're talking both to people that are practicing this uh, in their vocation and also avocation. A lot of our examples today will be dressed in rotary clothes because of the attendance in this particular session. Why don't more rotary clubs have an email distribution list? What do you think? I think it's hard because not every, not, there's not one person who looks after all of this. Sometimes yeah. it's a program committee, sometimes it's membership, sometimes it's someone else. Yeah, and I suppose that's our first tip of the session, which is that someone needs to own the list. If no one owns the list, there isn't a list. Um, and you'll see this in particular when you start collecting this information in what's called a CRM or customer relationship management tool. Uh, Kim just emailed me about her CM, a CRM in the real estate field. Um, and she asked a question too, I'll answer in a second. He. But, but the idea of the CRM is that, oh, sorry, Kim is a he, sorry. And Burlington's a city. <laughs> In Canada. Kim, I'm 100% I'm sure I'm not the first person to make that mistake. <laughs> uh, one question, one second, sir, and I'll answer the rest of the question. Uh, so the CRM essentially in Rotary world is Club Runner, or in some cases, DACDB. How many of you are using Club Runner? Thumbs up. And how many of you are using DACDB? Okay. Uh, by the way, there's a thumb uh, in the reactions down in the mm -hmm. system tray of the Zoom interface. There's a reaction button. If you would click it for me right now, and just for practice, click one of the icons. Let's say the thumbs up icon, so you know it's there. That means you understand what I'm saying. You're in agreement <laughs> and that I can move ahead because you get it. You'll notice there is no thumbs down icon in the systems tray. <laughs> okay, so uh, to finish answering Kim's question, he says, um, by the sound of the dialogue, it sounds like this session is more introductory. Would you agree? I don't wanna vocalize this and be disrespectful. I'm sorry, uh, it's, we're all open here, it's fine. Um, I don't know where it's gonna go. I have some rather advanced tips, Kim. If you think that you're gonna place out of this particular class and you've got other things to do, I totally get it. We're recording the session and I'll post it in the Zone 28 Facebook group. I'm also going to post it in the Get the Word Out Now Facebook group, which is all about marketing. And Rotarians are in that group from all over the world. If you're not in that group, you need to be in it. It has a much different conversation level, Doug Vincent will tell you this, than 99% uh, of the Rotary groups out there. Get the word out now. And by the way, Kim, if you have advanced questions that you want to insert a uh, little rule of speaking here, I, my, my thing during the day is I teach presentation skills. I always think it's better to talk down to the audience a little bit than up. So uh, I'll be pulling you in that advanced, you know, into the advanced airspace, even if you don't want to go, because I don't want to tell you a bunch of shit you already know. I want you to get better. So I'm not gonna recapitulate and review a bunch of stuff that's common knowledge. And, and I appreciate it if you wouldn't do that either. Okay, so the reason, uh, my answer to the question, why don't people, uh, why don't more clubs have email lists? One, it's hard. Two, you have to keep at it. I mean, you all have a list. The primary, it's your members list. And to Doug's point, you might have a few friends of Rotary in there where they're called honorary Rotarians, associate members, uh, spouses, kids, whatever, mostly spouses. Um, but here's the thing, you know, we get, we get thousands and thousands of people to visit Rotary every year and they come in and they leave and we don't have any way to keep in touch with them because we're too lazy to grab their email. In a physical world, we would have them sign in and sometimes we would have them 
manually give their email address. What's the problem with that system? Doesn't get entered anywhere. That's one, it doesn't get entered. Another is, you know, the, the person leaves five minutes later, you're looking at it and says, is that, is that Mark or Mike? <laughs> you know, if it's an email address, every character has to be exactly precise. And now you're trying to decipher handwriting and they were writing, standing up, you know, awkward talking to people while they're doing it. It's just the worst way ever to collect data. So if you are gonna have them sign in like that, uh, have them leave a business card so that you can cross reference it. Uh, and by far the best way to do it is to, um, is to key it in in real time, you know, during the meeting and try to try to confirm it even have the secretary try to confirm it during the meeting. That's lovely. And then you can catch them on the way out the door. Is it Mark or Mike? <laughs> right? Okay, so, um, so that's in a physical world. We're collecting emails that way. Uh, and in the virtual world, um, what's how do we collect in a zoom in a zoomtopia? How do we collect emails? On chat? Uh, could do it in chat and chat Moya. What's in a more elegant way than that? And they register. Registration. And I remember arm wrestling Rotarians in the early days of the pandemic. What is the matter with you people? Zoom has finally arranged a way for you for them to register and give you the most important piece of information about them, which allows you to keep in touch with them for four more years, which is their email address. And, and, the, and the Rotarians, if I may, lazy meeting planners were saying, nope, we want nothing to do with registration. It's harder to set up than not having registration. And then they were, they were kind of euchred into doing registration because of the Zoom bombers. That was the way to kind of protect the, uh, protect the integrity of the program by getting people to register because the bad guys don't want to give you an email. So in summary, always, always, always collect the email. Rule number two, once you collect the email, don't just start selling them stuff. The first email should have nothing to do with persuasion or influence or selling. It should just be saying, hey, I'm glad we're connected. Tell us more about yourself. This is what I do in my business. I got tons of stuff to sell people, books, information products, online programs, uh, all kinds of stuff. But the first email is always, I really enjoyed meeting you. Because- Michael, can, again, I share, can I share one of process. your- uh success stories that I've observed you do. Do you mind? Yeah, sure. So um, two, three years ago, Michael and I were speaking at a conference together. Actually, it was a multi-district pet. And I was amazed at how he worked the audience. And uh, I believe we was going to give two or three free books away. So he asked for four volunteers to stand. And he sent each of them to the four corners of the room. And he said, if you want to uh, have your name in the lucky draw for these books, uh, as these four volunteers walk through the crowd, hand them your business card. And uh, they walked from each corner of the room to the center where Michael was. And when they got there to meet Michael, they had at least three to four inches, each of them, of business cards from the audience that Michael put in the hat and, and drew the prizes for. But it was nothing to do with the prizes. It was nothing to do with the draw. It was all about Michael's skill in, uh, in uh, having control of the audience to gather all of that data. And my hat's off to you, my friend. I was quite impressed how you did it that day. Yeah, thank you very much. And I've been doing that at every speaking event because I know that email is my connective tissue to all these Rotarians that I want to help. And Rotarians that need my help, by the way. If they don't want, to, if they don't want my help, they don't have to be on the list. But I... I try to facilitate this in every way I can, Doug. I appreciate the nice compliment, thank you. So moral of the story, collect the email addresses and assign it to somebody. The ideal person in the club to do this is the secretary. And if you've got a good secretary, uh, good secretaries don't have homework is, is my motto. They actually do their homework during the meeting. Secretaries have this kind of DNA anyway, where they're not usually actively uh, involved in most of the meetings, they're doing their, their work um, because they're prepping checks for the president to sign and all kinds of stuff. So why can't they peek at the email list and, and be poking around in Club Runner during the meeting? I think that's a great way to go. Um, so get those lists going and try to build that list, try to target that list for a certain um, uh, quality and quantity. And so the quality would be people that would be either interested in joining the club or uh, attending a future event 
or contributing to a rotary cause, right? If they fit one of those three criterias, they, criteria, they go into the list. And quantity works like this. I think you should try to go 10X of your club's in, um, enrollment. So if you have, um, sorry, not 10X, 100X. If your club has 50 people, you should try to have a list of 5,000. And some of you think that, well, that's a big number. Why? First of all, where am I ever gonna get 5,000? I just told you, you, if you have 10 people come a week, over time, it happens. If, if you have people come to a big event, if you have a festival and you can collect emails at the festival, make sure you have a checkbox in the registration that says Rotary may be sending some opportunities for you to you know, have some more fun uh, in the community. Would you be interested? They check the box, you send an email or hear you know, interesting speakers, that kind of a thing. And the list will grow over time because you need a big list. Like if you, the rule in marketing, at least in the Rotary world, my rule <laughs> is if you want 100 people to attend your event, you need 10,000 internet impressions. Now, where are you going to get those 10,000 impressions? It's a different argument. In Facebook, for example, I have, you can max out at 5,000 personal friends. I'm there. I've been there for a while. Some of you may be there. So if I, in theory, doesn't work quite like this, but in theory, if I post to my Facebook group twice, that's 10,000 impressions. Not everybody saw it, of course, a small fraction of it. But if I just do that over and over again to a bunch of pages, LinkedIn, Twitter, my email list, my personal company, my email list is 7,000. And the open rate's close to 40%. That's something that you should be concerned about too. And you can check that in Club Runner, how many people are opening the email. So I want to uh, do a, create a little equation for you that goes across like this. So the first thing is um, in email marketing, the first thing that you need to be concerned about is called the open rate. Uh, sorry, delivery rate, delivery rate. And reading from like left, for, left to right. The next is open rate. I'll do it with you. And the next is something called the read rate. I'll show you. And then there's something called the click-through rate or CTR. And it looks like this. So left to right. Delivery rate determines the open rate. Open rate determines the read rate. And the read rate determines, to some extent, the click-through rate. Let's talk about each of these things and how important they are. The delivery rate comes from how clean your email list is. We talked about this a little bit earlier. Let's fry this egg right now. Your email list must be deduped, well, scrubbed is what they call it. That's how you clean it, you scrub it. And the way you scrub it is by deduping it, taking out the dead people, uh, taking out, um, when I say dedupe, it's the duplicate email addresses, um, fixing, you know, somebody's got a problem with, you know, a, a non-deliverable, like you'll go and it'll say, um, the email address will be um, something something dot con, C-O-N. Well, M is right next to N on the keyboard. I'm gonna guess that, that the reason that email is not being opened is because somebody keystroked it wrong. So I'm gonna change it to com. And now they're more likely, like 100% more likely to actually get your damn email. So the delivery rate is based on the quality of the list and, and how good the keeper's discipline is in scrubbing the list and maintaining it. But but it's important because if, if you have a, a poor quality list, it's gonna impact the rest of the, the, the equation. The next is called the open rate. And the open rate comes from this idea of um, the subject line being attractive. And we brushed up against that earlier in the preamble to this class. So I'm gonna take care of this for you right now too. And we're gonna to get to this place, Mary, where you wanna be, which is, how do you keep the darn list? That's what I want to know. That's what Mary's on the call. That's okay. Teasing. No, this is all good. <laughs> okay. I'm not teasing you. I just can't, I can only talk about one thing at a time and sometimes it works to do it in sequence. So the open rate is determined by how attractive the subject line is. And that speaks to, who asked the question about the perfect subject line? That's your line. MJ. Okay. So, uh, so, you have to think about it in a couple, three different ways. Yes, there are what are called dead words, and there are words that are more influential than others. 
um, save the date as a subject line is not attractive to me and MJ's onto it. I think it's another leading question because there's nothing in it that's emotional or attractive. It's again, it's about a process. I want you to do something on your desk, right? What if I said our best event this year? Do you hear the difference between our best event this year and save the date? What you're trying to use are words that are emotional or emotionally laden. And the, the easiest way to do this, I've taught this all over the world, the easiest way to understand this is to use what's called a positive adjective. So you always put a positive adjective before the noun. Kim, you're smiling either because you're amused or because you agree, <laughs> or maybe you're drunk. Have you been drinking? <laughs> the guy. Okay. <laughs> I usually have something, but I'm, I don't have water today. Um, so um, a positive adjective before the noun. So a lot of times we'll say, Mary Smith is our speaker on Wednesday. And that's the subject line. What, what's the open rate on it? Is it? I mean, do you know Mary? Do you know who Mary Smith is? No. Is it a news that you have a speaker this week? No. Uh, nothing about that you know, has me clicking. Don't forget when email comes up on a screen, there's like 20 of them. I don't know about you, but I don't open them from top to bottom. Is anybody that anal retentive? <laughs> Come on, it's one of you. <laughs> Kim. <laughs> Kim is. <laughs> but you know, if you get it on your phone, you are going to get one at a time, you know, like the, the screen pops, that kind of a thing. So I get it. But if I'm doing something and that screen pops with some lame subject line, I don't stop everything I'm doing. To, I'm not slave to that, you know? Mm -hmm. Somebody asked me earlier, how do I keep my email? I, I'm not really good at keeping my email because what I'm working on is almost always more important than this incoming email message, almost always. I don't care how good you are at writing subject lines. So we want emotion laden words, preferably adjectives. Um, and a lot of people refer to this as, uh, in some cases, it's actually hyperbola. Now hyperbola has gotten a bad name thanks to our recent president because hyperbola is what's called, it's an exaggeration of what could be the truth, right? And it's on a sliding scale. And we all know this guy was off the chart in terms of over um, emphasizing or over promising or over, um, what's, the, what's the word? Uh, over promising emphasizing. The importance of it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what we want to do is because hyperbole is legal, right? It's, it's very persuasive is we just move the slider off of center a little bit and everybody does this. I'll give you some examples. Best coffee in town, most music in the morning, uh, happiest person in the, on the planet. I mean, if, if I ever introduced you to the happiest person on the planet, are you going to actually get out some kind of slide rule and compass <laughs> and start to measure and check my facts, you know? It, we just don't work roll like that. So there is that, that area there where almost everybody's comfortable with a little bit of exaggeration, that a little bit of emotion. Um, and if you're wrong, so what? This will be our best speaker of the quarter or we're expecting the most attendance of the quarter or, or of the year. You're just expecting it, guys. You know, it's okay. So when you put that in the subject line, people go, oh, like this. Now, can you overdo it? Yeah, <laughs> of course. But that's why there's 170,000 words in the English language. You're supposed to use more than five of them. Um, so the open rate determined by your very effective subject line determines the read rate. Now, this is the hardest of the four to measure. There is actually software that can tell what area, like when they analyze websites, what area of the screen you're looking at and for how long, even uh, basic uh, Google Analytics on a website can tell you which page people spend the most time on. Did you know that? I'm not sure Club Runner will do that for your website, but most, like the simplest, in the same way we used to do mail merge pretty easily now, almost every software program offers mail merge. Anybody mail merge? No. Your first name automatically shows up in the email, which by the way, I recommend the first name in the email and the subject line still works like a charm. It works as good as $4.95 instead of $5. I know, I know what you're thinking. Aren't we highly, more highly evolved than that? The answer, <laughs> no, it still works. So keep doing it. Email in the subject line.
By the way, the first name in the subject line, when it comes first, like Mary, do you think this is a good event for you? Is more paternal. And when you put Mary at the end of it, do you think this is a good event for you, comma, Mary, is more fraternal. Do you hear how the first one's a bit more bossy or formal? Mm -hmm. And the second one's more like, I'm your buddy. So you can really get into this stuff. Mm -hmm. That's called an embedded phrase. It, uh, the grammarians call it an embedded phrase. So the, the first name in the subject line for sure. The read rate is hard to measure, but here's how you know for sure somebody read your email. Every email should have a CTA or call to action. And the call to action is a click. It's not, it's not go to your fridge right now and, and get some water to drink. It's click here for more information. Click here to register. Click here to see the photo array. And that click tells you they read the email. That's why the CTR, the click-through rate, is the holy grail in email marketing. That's what all this is about, getting them to click. Let's take a second for questions. My biggest problem is I got hacked once because I clicked <laughs> when I shouldn't click. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I am so nervous and so cautious. I've taken all kinds of the email security things. So I, I think I know all the things to look for, but I know how many people are so concerned. So it's really hard when you're, the call to action is click here as opposed to visit our website or um, you know, some other sort of call to action, um, unless they know it's you, I don't know, it's, it's how do you make sure that they don't think you're Well, it's back to the people person. thing, right? You're, if you're a trusted source, they won't yeah. hesitate. Only the very paranoid will, will, will hesitate to click. I'm going to bet all the money in my front left pocket that you did not click on a link from a trusted source, Mary. It was from a trusted source. They had been so, hacked. They had been hacked. Okay. They had been hacked. And so That's it was, good. it That's was from to... the people that I leased my car from and they sent me an email. Um, and it looked legitimate. It looked like it was actually from the sales guy that I knew. Okay. And yeah. it told me to open up this document and I clicked and yeah. So they moral ended up... of the story, don't work too quickly. And I, I don't know what the link looked like, but all kinds of smart people fall for this. Ellen DeGeneres got hacked a couple of weeks ago. Somebody she knew somebody sent an email from a company that she had been doing business with and the domain name was one character off. Yeah. Yeah. I know working, that to check that now. Yeah. She was working quickly. So it resembled something that looked familiar, but she was working quickly. She didn't catch it. The other thing is if you're clicking on what's called a cloaked hyperlink, you all know a hyperlink is the blue link that's mm -hmm. automatically clickable. If it's cloaked, like it says, click here, H E R E. And that's the part you click. You don't know what's behind there. But in some email programs, you can mouse over it and see what the actual link is. Another thing you could do is have software on your program on your computer that recognizes the dangerous link before it connects you. Some of the most basic antivirus uh, software will protect you. Mary, can you make a recommendation on that now that you've done the research? Uh, well, actually, it's the uh, company that I have my computer from. Um, they actually loaded a bunch of stuff. So it's all enterprise stuff. So it's not a... It's not yeah. a personal one, yeah. So McAvee, Norton, right? And, yeah. and talk to, get a good IT person that can install it for you so you're not missing anything on that. I don't want, I want you to be paranoid about opening email. That yeah, no, is, and I, I'm just thinking if we're, if we're making that our call to action, will other people, you know, like, will that impact our, our click rate if, if yeah. our call to action is a click? I think it'll be a very small percentage of the people that are afraid to click a link from the Rotary Club. But you, you also need, speaking of trusted sources, you need, you need your email administrator in the club not to be a, a clown. That would be good. You know, somebody that's responsible. Yeah. Um, so after read rate is the CTR, and that is that call to action that we talked about. And that CTR is going to be buoyed in other platforms like Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube channel. Uh, in verbal meetings, you know, you can give the call to action like this. So it's not... It's not that email is the silver bullet, but if email in, is indeed the strongest marketing muscle, this is the magic sauce right here. This is the superpower, the CTR. And everything that we're doing is getting, getting staged for that. Hi, Robert, how are you? Thanks for joining us. 
Okay, we're back to some Q and A now. On um, oh, and, uh, are we doing okay in chat, guys? I trying to keep up. Yep. Looks like looks like MJ's keeping you entertained. Why am I always the troublemaker, Michael? What the heck? Do you not want me to call you MJ? Have at her, man. Does it matter? <laughs> There's so many names. <laughs> but there are. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. What is this quiz can help you? Oh, I did that. Or maybe Omi did that. This quiz. Yeah, uh, Omi was just saying that this is somewhere yeah. you can go to to get more information on not getting hacked. <laughs> the, the quiz oh, can actually like help you understand how different parts of an email can be what. And if you. Oh the quiz a couple times it kind of like educates you a little bit more about links and okay. how they work i was going to say that looks remarkably like clickbait <laughs> uh, right. i'm afraid i'm afraid to click on it <laughs> okay um, let's get back to sometimes uh, if i can just throw something else in sometimes yeah. i'm afraid to click on them too i'll go on the link and instead of clicking on it if it doesn't show up i'll right click and then save the link and then I can copy and put it into my uh, URL address bar and see what it is before I go there. If I'm, if yeah. it's one that I am questionable about at all. Yeah, and think about the link itself, guys. If it's a domain with an extension and, and it just looks suspicious, just go to the domain first. Don't go to the actual complete link, go to the domain. Does it look like a legitimate company? And then you can try the domain. Another trick, and maybe somebody knows more about this than I do, sometimes I check dubious stuff on my phone. I'll open the email on my phone because the phone doesn't have a, um, um, it's not as um, susceptible to virus. Does anybody know differently? Has anybody ever had to call some, an IT person to, to uh, debug your phone? Yeah, it's just as susceptible. Just as susceptible? And yeah, because it can grab your, for example, a, a website can grab all your contacts without you knowing. Uh, it can also take, for example, banking information that you may have saved into your phone. So it can do a really, really good grab of your phone without you knowing it. Okay. So. All right, thank you. No uh, um, and yes, my background is IT. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm <laughs> throwing that's that okay. out. Sounds like, sounds like you know what you're doing. <laughs> Um, okay, so um, let's talk now about, we're going to get to this Friends of Rotary piece. Uh, before we do, I want to tie a little bow here on the perfect email body, because people struggle with this. There's a lot more places that you can, a lot more sand traps to step into in the email body. Uh, I don't know what it is about long paragraphs and long sentences, and people just, they send these emails that are so difficult to parse and figure out, you know, simple, simple, simple stuff is better. In um, the, the quick recipe is shorter paragraphs, shorter sentences, and shorter words are best. And you want to carry that emotion through the rest of the thing. So I use exclamation marks, but I use them sparingly. I never use two at a time, right? And I'll always open with that mail merge, like, um, uh, hi, Moya because Moya thinks this is for her, right? If, you, if you're sending a bulk email and you wrote, hi, everybody, and the person, op the one person oh. opens the email and it says, hi, everybody, what are you telling Click. me? Click. Yeah, I don't care about you as a person. Delete. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm spamming a whole bunch of people. So make it to them, make it to that person, very important. Um, and then maybe let's just keep a simple formula, guys. Three paragraphs is all. First paragraph stages, you know, uh, stages what you're offering. Second paragraph has the details about it. And the third paragraph is the call to action. In the old days, they used to say, put the link in there three times, but that got old really fast. Uh, I would also add that the first paragraph creates um, tension or a problem or stress. Uh, this is classic playwriting, that conflict is introduced in act one of the play. And then act two is, a, all of act two is a struggle to overcome the conflict which doesn't actually come to a solution until the end of act three. And that's the end of the play. And that's kind of how your email goes. You, you, so the first paragraph could be something like, uh, are you tired of going to parties where uh, you don't know anybody and nobody ever talks to you? Well, come to our party and everybody will talk to you. So you see, <laughs> uh, 
Or are you tired of giving to organizations where uh, you never know where the money goes and you can't trust that they're not spending all the money on administration? Well, Rotary International Foundation has a five-star rating uh, with, uh, with uh, what's the name of the thing? Charity Navigator, but it's four-star. There's that hyperbola again. <laughs> four, four to six star rating on Charity Navigator. <laughs> but of course, get your facts right, right? Yeah. And then you say, so we know that your money's not going to administrative costs. In fact, you can now spec out your contribution. So a percentage goes to polio, a percentage goes to this, all of this is true. And so you build the case, uh, the persuasive emotional case for them to, to give to the Rotary Foundation or to polio or whatever. So that's the, that's the formula in general. If you'd like to see how I do this, sometimes it's best to learn through examples. Uh, you're welcome to sign up for my newsletter, which is called Friday Five. And the easy way to do that is, um, oh, and this is good for you to see because I use a, what's called the squeeze page to get your email. For the life of me, I don't know why more Rotary Clubs don't do this. So a squeeze page is just one web page, and I'll give it to you. It's www. Somebody might type it into the uh, chat so somebody can just click on it. I'm on it. Copy, copy paste. Thank you, MJ. <laughs> www.michaelangelocaruso.com forward slash Friday hyphen the number five. So it's a small F in Friday. <laughs> Mac.com, michaelangelocaruso.com forward slash Friday hyphen five. No caps. And if you have two screens open now and you click through, you'll see this is a very simple offer. It's I have a fun little newsletter. I think there's three bullet points of what I offer. Yes or no. It's a it's called a binary question. Yes or no. No, there's no other options. There's no place else to click. You know, it, it slays me when the call to action in Rotary is they send you to the club runner, the, the homepage of the club. Have you ever just looked at how many places there are to click on the average homepage? Oh my God, you lose your mind. And we send people there to find it, to find the offer. Like, and the logic is, well, they're at least visiting our page. Yeah, but they're not signing up for anything because it's you're sending them to this giant encyclopedia of links. Michael, can I ask you what app you use to, to run that squeeze page? Yeah, it's called uh, Lead Pages. I think Lead Pages, L-E-A-D. You pay for the year and then um, you could just do as many as you want. In fact, uh, I send out all my free reports like this. And why don't clubs do free reports? A free report on how to... Uh, how to interface with businesses, how to make friends in the community, how to such, how, and it all roads lead to Rotary, you see? And to get the free report, what do they have to give you, everybody? All together now? Email. An email. <laughs> and where's the email go? In Into UK. our new list that we're going to start building. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I tell you where it is, right? Now, <laughs> like, get it going. Um, and what, what little box do they have to do is pre-checked for them? They can uncheck it, but what little box is pre-checked is the one that says, is it okay permission. if we send you stuff, you know, because you trust us. Remember when, um, this is fun because people don't remember Bill Gates and Microsoft back in the day, but two things happened back in the day, really early on. Microsoft crashed every 10 minutes. Do you remember that? Yep. And we all hated Microsoft. And now it's like our best friend, some of us. Well, uh, and the other thing that happened was Bill Gates had to go to Washington D.C. to testify that they were they weren't be, they weren't bad guys, and that's when that all that big campaign. Do you trust Microsoft? Do you trust Microsoft? Thumbs up if you remember this. They asked us over and over again, "Do you trust us?" Because that's how they proved to the government, because it was the only way to to prove to the government that they were a trusted source. They couldn't tell people they were a trusted source. They had to have us tell them so they could tell the government that we trusted them. And that's how they became the, the industry standard. Okay, so um, so now let's get to Mary's, the big, the big uh, <laughs> reveal here, which is, Mary's like, it's about time. Uh, <laughs> the Friends of Rotary. Now, um, it may be called something different in your club runner because all you, you have the chance to customize your um, interface Yep. Friends of Ro Friends of Rotary, which is the, the the sanctioned same thing with DACDB, sanctioned database 
uh, provided for most clubs has all these fields that can be adjusted and changed and repopulated. And I want to tell you something, they used to be miserable help desk at friends of at, um, club runner and they are now really, really good. They are really good. Yeah. Yeah. So you call them, if you don't see it immediately, the friends of rotary, it's just called something else. It's there. Cause my club has been using it for years, ever since I was president actually. And is that you would, um, identify it as friends of rotary and then you would immediately start populating that field with these different uh, non-rotarian benefactors contributors sponsors people that come to your wine tasting all these kinds of folks you can put your interactors in there your rotaractors in there that's right. not the hard part the hard part is keeping them in the keeping list it. yeah so Doug, can you send me out. Yeah, can you send me the, the link to how you actually can enter an email address of someone who isn't in our database? So I do I, I did find a place where um, if I had volunteers sign up for some of our direct service that were outside of Rotary, I see those email addresses, um, but they came in through Club Runner events and the volunteer module. But if I've got some person, some random person uh, that, you know, attended one of our functions and stuff, and I, I don't expect you to tell me how to do it right here, but if I could just be sent a link on how to do that, that would be really helpful. Well, it's difficult for me to do that because I've got to log in at my end to my club and then you can't have access to that. But the easier way is just to Google Club Runner tutorials on... Um, membership database or something like that. They're, even they're, easier, if I may, even easier, Mary, call yeah. them. Call Just call runner. them? Okay. Yeah. And they'll say, look in the upper left part of your screen. They'll give you the right screen. Then they say, look in the upper left corner. You see that? And you'll go, oh, yeah, duh, duh. Okay. So, Mary. There. Yes. Mary, very quickly now, I'm membership chair. I go into Club Runner. I can see contacts, manage contacts. I can add a new contact. So three clicks. Outside of Rotary? Uh, you go into the member area. Yeah, so you I log tried in that. Member area, contacts. Yeah. Manage contacts. Yeah. And then it comes up and you say, add new contact. And then there's groups. And we have a group called Meeting Guest. Yes. So that's because they are already populated on there. But if oh. I've got, if I want to just add somebody that has never gone through Club Runner, and it's just a new person, I don't know how to do that. She just mentioned you, you're yes. adding contacts. This... You're, not, you're not adding members, you're adding contacts, and that's okay. what you want to do. The right. contacts I'll, I'll try it again, but that's what I tried, I thought. <laughs> Maybe I did it wrong. Mary, if you call yeah. Club Runner and still don't get satisfaction, call you call me, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay. I will do that, yeah. I'll put my phone number in chat here. Yeah. Because I, I could see, I could see us actually utilizing that, um, you know, populating it with people that are not part of our our actual list. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, <laughs> Kathy. What's your dog's name? <laughs> Oops, you're on mute. <laughs> That's Ziggy. That's one of my three dogs. <laughs> dog. The dog's name is what? Ziggy. Oh, Ziggy. Okay. Like the Ziggy Marley. Ziggy has contributed nothing to this conversation. <laughs> okay. Well, um, how to put a, uh, do a subject line though, so she's pretty excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had a question about. Um, we had a question about photos in the email body. Uh, yes, uh, better to have them in the body than in the uh, attachment. Never ever send a bulk email with attachment because when the emails get returned, you, you, you know, the, you, you have to deal with all that bulk now. Um, also, if it's not the photo that's getting them to sign up and it's not 10 photos that will get them to sign up, it's one really good photo, right? Make sure it's a really good, whatever it's graphic or photo, whatever it is. And you can now insert that in the email, but don't make it giant and don't make it a video. Don't eat, for God's sake, don't. Don't email videos, do video links. PSs are very powerful in uh, email bodies. They still work, the P so the PS at the bottom. 
And sometimes it's awkward. I have a pretty long signature file. So I put the, actually put the PS above the signature file, but it still works. It's, it's technically misplaced, but it still works. There's something about a PS people dig. I don't know, high rate, read rate on them. Okay. Checking through of things that we didn't need to talk about. I'm opening the floor for questions. Oh, I want to tell you the horror story about, about what happens when you burn out your list. Mm. So we have a really strong, uh, I, I'm just going to, I'm not going to tell you the club. I'm going to tell you a story because everybody sees these videos, right? I, I'm not trying to embarrass anybody. I'm trying to help you. But in order to help you, I want to tell you a real story. And it turns out it happened to a club and I don't want, the club to be embarrassed. They, they're they learning, we're all learning. Okay, so that's the background of this. So the club has a pretty healthy um, email list and they're having a big event. They have a really VIP speaker. I'm not gonna tell you the speaker because that will kind of implicate who I'm talking about here, but it, just to say really, really famous person gonna speak. And they decided, well, um, it's not enough to have the famous person come. We're gonna have to really hammer people it was like, it was almost like the opposite of what you would normally do. If you have low level people that nobody knows, you would hammer them to get them to come. But, but this club had really a famous person and we're going to hammer them anyway. So you got this, you not only got an email every two days for the, for the six week lead up or two month lead up, you got the same email oh. <laughs> with the same subject line. <laughs> and here's what happened people had signed up for the event and in the process because this club knows some tricks given permission for email marketing which allowed this overzealous meeting planner to send them the email again over and over again and then they about the fourth time they're like take me off your list so the people that were interested in the event and gravitating toward the club, which is exactly how this is supposed to work, were pushing us away at the same time. Mm. Isn't that something? Mm. It gets better. See it happen. club wanted to have another event after that. But so many people had asked to be off the list that in order to be can sp spam compliant, they were obligated to clean the list before they used it for the next event, which means the club couldn't properly uh, market the next event because the email address was in the doghouse. Mm. A tangled web we weave, right? <laughs> mm. So the email has to be high quality. The people, they'll be understanding to a certain point, but if you just abuse the system or get lazy, uh, it's probably, I think what happens more often, nobody abuses on purpose, but we get lazy and we think, oh, I'll just blow this. I don't have time to write another email. I'll just blow this one past them again. And that's when the unsubscribes start showing up. And that's the, your leading indicator that they're bored or they don't, or they need to see something else from you or whatever. Interesting story, right? Mm -hmm. And that kind of illustrates how all of this kind of ties together and how it can blow up in your face if you don't know what you're doing. But it's easy to prevent. You just have to be diligent and vigilant. Okay, let's open up for questions. Anything you wanna ask? Yes, Susan. Michael, um, I'm dealing with a number of um, youth exchange people and what I'm learning from them is they don't really use email. It's not their preferred style of communicating. So. How do we connect with young people who are maybe visitors to our club or anything else um, besides using email? Well, I bet you can guess at some of the answers, Susan. Where, where are young people these days? Um, they're not on Facebook anymore. Instagram, mm -hmm. um, but not so much Facebook and then texting. Yeah, texting and... Um, um, so a, a bunch of my assistants... TikTok. TikTok, yeah, but you have, you know, if, you, if you care to open up another platform, um, and I don't know how that is for messaging anyway, Instagram itself isn't that great for messaging. Um, no, and, I wouldn't, and I'm not at the place where I would, I, I, I'm that desperate for young people in my life that I would pay 
<laughs> for, for text programs because that's kind of how that works. Has anybody done that? Paid for the text? Uh, and you mm-hmm. not only, and that's a racket because I think you not only pay for your text to go to them, you pay every time they text back to you, and the other person doesn't know you're paying for that. They just keep texting, you know, so the bill can can ratchet up pretty quick. That's why you don't want to count on any one thing to carry the day. I can tell you after speaking at the District 6400 RILA, I was the lead facilitator for almost 15 consecutive years. We conditioned the young people to answer their damn email. Because first of all, we wrote really good emails. We complimented them, we made them feel good. We always offered value. And they knew that in order to stay with us and stay close that they had to, they had to answer the email. Now, in a perfect world, you know, you get to do that, but. I, I feel for you. I, I, I know it's hard to connect with young people. So the newest thing now is you create avatars and you do it in something like Canva, which is extremely easy. And you drop in the keywords that you need in the avatar. And then you slave the avatar to Facebook and in particular, Instagram. But you'd need the following. You'd need the young people following you on Instagram in order to do it. So it, there's a lot of fish to fry here. Uh, go ahead, Susan. Maybe, Susan, you could text them that you sent them an email. Please read it. <laughs> That's what I do with my kids. I, I, I have some people that I have to do that with. Yeah. So I the, the main contents in the email and the text just alerts them to the fact they need to check their email. <laughs> I think we've conditioned people not to answer email. We read crappy emails with crappy subject lines. We email too much. Mm-hmm. We, we, uh, we email because it's easy and we don't really care about the people, um, you know. What if, what, if you, what if you're able to call a couple of the key people and actually tell them, look, we, we have to work with email. Can you get your crew, talking to the other young people, to uh, honor us and, and answer it? Especially if you're talking about an Interact Club or a Rotary Act Club. You know, they have, they have an obligation to communicate with Rotary if they want to exist. Uh, it's a pesky one. I feel for you, Susan. I think we're, we're finding that um, they may use email less and not as their primary personal uh, method of communicating, but they still read emails and they will yeah. as they go into business. I think it's a value proposition. I think Phil's right. Uh, having said that, what's the value? What's the proposition? Yep. Phil, you had a question in chat. Can you talk about stealing email addresses when you receive email with addresses and avoiding getting email addresses stolen? Can you explain that? Yeah, it's very easy if you receive emails from, say, your Chamber of Commerce. They're not savvy enough to put the duplicate, the other people's emails in the BCC section instead of the CC section. If they put it in carbon copy and you receive that email, you can just cut and paste those email addresses right into your list. Right. And that's where the stealing comes in because it's not yes. permission based. Yeah. yeah, it was never permission based. But you get one, essentially, you could say you get one shot to send them an email. And if the email has an unsubscribe in it, it will kind of self clean. And in the same vein, don't do what I just said. Don't put multiple addresses in the CC section, put it in the BCC section. Yeah. They can't tip. steal it there. They can't see it, but everybody gets their email and nobody else sees the other emails. Yeah. Um, and a little trick that I use, because a lot of times uh, I'm, I know I'm offering something that these people want. They mm-hmm. just don't know it yet. Back to that persuasion thing again. Right. So uh, I'm with Phil. I get one shot at it at, trying to lure these people in and then I have to back off. So yep. I reply to all. And remember I told you about my signature file. If you're doing emails for Rotary, you should have a decent signature file that very crafty, very um, well-written that has a link they can click, a killer video. Uh, I recorded a video some time ago about how every business leader should have a leadership role in Rotary because it's really good for their CV. And a guy in the club, hot shot in the club, edited it. It's on YouTube now, um, you can probably find it. Uh, I mean, if you wanted to find it, my full name, Troy Rotary Leader, and it'll come up. And it's very well edited. I didn't edit it. He did a great job on it. But uh, 
I think that's still in my signature file um, because I want you to know how great Rotary is and, 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 and video is a terrific way to sell, you know, just like images are, the right image. So uh, I also have a photo of myself in, in the signature file. I'm stunned at how many signature files don't even have a, uh, they don't have a phone number. They don't have an area code, or if you're in Canada, a, uh, what do you guys call it? Area code. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Mary. We, we have area codes in our igloos. <laughs> Spell it differently. There's a hidden U in there. You, you That's funny. Postal code, weren't you? We have postal code. Oh, I was thinking of postal code. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, or how about this? You do a Zoom link and you don't say what time zone. Yeah. And people can log in from all over now, right? So you have to have like a, you take your windshield mm. and you go like this and you start to understand what's really happening in the world. And now the friends of Rotary, what happens to your friends of Rotary email <laughs> list in a, in a Zoom world? Because you've got people logging in from Africa now. I mean, it's, I remember when I first started selling physical products, books and stuff, and I had to arrange for shipping. Well, shipping is really easy if you're just shipping in the United States. You, you find the UPS rate and it, mm -hmm. you plug it in. But if you're shipping overseas, man, you got to really think this through. You have to understand who, who are your friends now? Who are the friends of Rotary? Yeah. Uh, another good trick that I would recommend, if you are using a, uh, a list of any kind, uh, uh, bulk email list, I recommend sending about four emails a year. Well, first of all, I would recommend sending one a month so that so that people have chances to click on stuff because if, if they become unengaged, a lot of the CRM managers will insist that you delete them from your list. Thumbs up if you know this. If, if you email somebody for a year and they never respond to your email, if your CRM is worth their salt, they say you have to take them off the list, they're unengaged. It's hurting your delivery rate. This is the latest thing to kind of keep, keep the email volume down. Um, so you want people to click on stuff, even if they don't register, just click to see it, you know, click like, like a lot of times they don't show them the price in the body of the email, they have to click on the link to go see the price, right? That means they're engaged, they clicked on the link. Um, but what I was going to tell you was that if you're emailing, say, once a month, you want four of those emails a year to be non-salesy, like no offer, no pitch. Listen to me carefully, though. There's still a place for them to click, which is hear this Christmas carol, or here's, here's uh, watch this uh, holiday video, or uh, in the United States, here, here's an Independence Day, uh, quick Independence Day salute for you. And you click on it, right? And now they're engaged. You didn't try to sell them. And we honored people over process, which is the whole problem with email, that they feel like a widget. So it's a great tip. It's, like I said earlier, when I, when I send to the first time somebody's on my list, it's always, it was great to meet you uh, in the same way, like four times a year. And the good one is the holiday season, not Christmas, because not everybody celebrates Christmas, right? But holiday season or start to the new year. Everybody's into that. Or um, another one is uh, warm weather is here. Everybody celebrates warm weather. Find these mm -hmm. kind of universal holidays that, that people could, you know, like and engage it. Okay, anything else before we wrap? Did you enjoy the program? Was it worth it? Did yeah. I answer all your questions? Thank you so much for your time, Michael. That was uh, really informative for me. I, you know, I, th I think it's something that our club needs to do. Um, so, and having a, a few of my peeps on the call, we can, uh, we can now, you know, kind of get together and say, okay, what's our strategy? How do we do it? Who's gonna be accountable for it? Who do we want on these lists? How are we going to collect the data? And because um, I think we we should be using it. And you know, there's so many events that we we don't capitalize on all the people that we already know and probably want to know about stuff that's going on. So, yeah. so it's very Imagine, informative. Thank you so much. I mean, one of the problems with keeping sponsors year after year is that we feel like you know they, we lose touch with them. If mm -hmm. they were friends of Rotary and they were getting you know updates on what's happening with the club once in a while, they're actually. Mm -hmm you're pulling them closer all the time. You know, you're not just knocking on their door when you need money. Right. Right. Um, yes, sir. Yeah, Robert. I am not 
part of a Rotary Club. I'm a Toastmaster, but I'm working with somebody from a Rotary Club here in Windsor about building their Friends of Rotary list. She's trying to really build that out because it's a small club, but she wants to have her impact through the uh, Friends of Rotary Club. So that's been very useful for this. You said you're going to put this link for this recorded video in District 68. Is that what you said? Um, sorry, uh, two, two Facebook groups, Zones 28 and 32 okay. Facebook group, and the Get the Word Out Now group, which might be better for you, Robert. Get the Word Out Now. On yeah, Facebook. I've already got that. But for me to point her to watching a, re a recording of this, how can I do that? I'll so I send you a PM. Also have it, I'll probably also have it on YouTube down the road. A uh, little okay. caveat, guys. It's going to take me a little while to get it camera ready, prime time ready. Because right. uh, there's stuff I do to it to make sure SEO works on it. I want a lot of views on video when I post it. I don't just dump and run. So it'll be a few days. Um, Robert, if you can't find it, you can message me. I'm pretty okay. easy to find my email address. I'll put it into uh, chat here. Okay. Why don't I give it verbally, everybody? Anybody know? Because somebody might a make a spelling mistake, and if one of the letters is wrong, it won't go to you. <laughs> that was right at the beginning of the video. You're my favorite student. <laughs> uh, no, but that's not why, because I just gave you a clue. I'm going to put the video on YouTube, and if I give you my email verbally, see, everybody has it then, which I'm not sure. There's a lot of clowns on YouTube. So it's in chat for you there now, my, my email, if you, if, I, if you need anything after this. Rotarians can find me easy enough, but Robert, you might... If we're not buddies on Facebook, you might struggle with that. Somebody uh, mentioned Slack. Yeah, I don't have any experience with Slack, but I hear good things about it. It is another platform to pick up. Mm -hmm. um, oh, um, looks like MJ found the leadership video. Yeah. Yeah, I found a couple of them. There's a okay. couple of gems in there, Michael. Yeah, <laughs> Michael. Michael is a young man. Um, See, I'm cleaning up chat here to make sure they didn't let you down in any way. So if y'all would do me a favor, when you're in the, um, the groups, because I'm trying to condition people to join these things so that they can get educated, so we can stop the membership plunge, so we can continue to be the best um, uh, service organization in the world, is give me a little heads up, or not heads up, but a uh, attaboy if, if I deserve it for the content and for the time. Um, and that will encourage them to be on the lookout for the video. You'll see your magic because you'll go, Michael, what a great session. Thank you so much. I really learned a lot. And tell me one thing that you learned so that people get an idea. And then you'll see somebody go, well, is the video going to be available? And that's how, you know, we got them, right? And then, mm -hmm. then I'll, uh, by that time, I'll be able to post the video and then we'll complete the circuit where, where a bunch of people learn how to do e bulk email. And I wear my rotary pin all the time. And so when I'm out, <laughs> that's it. I don't know if that's the right one or not, but that's that's one of them. <laughs> okay, anything else, ladies and gentlemen? I really appreciate you being on yeah. today. You've yeah. got my contact information if there's something I can help you with. Moya? Yes, absolutely. No, no, that's I was saying goodbye. <laughs> okay. Michael, thank you for your time. Much thank you so much for your time. Really, I love you guys. Thank you so much for everything. Right. Thank, right. Thanks, bye. Michael. Bye -bye. And thanks to bye, the rest of the group, all the things you do that make the world a better place. Oh, thank you, Robert. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. <laughs> See you, folks. We, we're all right. Our new members, thanks again. Robert. I'll stay on for a minute. <laughs>